maybe it's not that important. Have you ever found yourself in a situation like this? Oh my goodness. Well, that was fun. Minecraft is a game with nearly unlimited possibility. It's about as open world as you can get. Explore, fight, gather, create. You can do whatever you choose to set your mind to. But the same things that make Minecraft great may also make it overwhelming, especially for newer players. And that's why this video exists. I can't tell you how to play, but I can help you discover what you can do to get you started, and for some more experienced players, maybe help you brush up on the basics. Welcome to Minecraft Caves Notes. Let's go ahead and mine right into today's topic. If you're playing Minecraft on survival mode, you can't hide from monsters forever. At some point, you're going to need to face them. Many mobs drop useful items, and some of them can only be obtained through defeating enemies. So in this video, I'll talk about the basics of weapons in Minecraft, the differences between Java and Bedrock for combat mechanics, and some simple generalized tactics. This guide may be a bit shorter than some of my recent videos, but there's a good reason for that. I'll be releasing several other videos covering some tips and more specific tactics for tackling the individual mobs you are most likely to see in the early game. When fighting enemies in Minecraft, you can attack with anything you happen to have in your hands, but it won't do much damage. It's definitely best to stick with items that are meant to be weapons. There are four melee weapons, the sword, the axe, the mace, and the trident. Ranged weapons come in three varieties, the bow and the crossbow, and then the trident can also function as a ranged weapon. In both editions of the game, the act of attacking is the same. For melee weapons, simply click the Attack Destroy button while you are facing an enemy. On Java Edition, if the attack gauge is nearly full, and you are touching the ground and not sprinting, you will perform a sweep attack, hitting all enemies in range with your swipe. However, only the primary target will take the full damage, any other affected enemies will receive a single hit point of damage, unless you have a specific enchantment on your sword. The axe is always single target, and is used the same way. In Java Edition, axes have a stronger hit than swords, but are slower, while in Bedrock Edition, axes have the same attack time as swords, but are slightly weaker. Sprinting towards an enemy and landing a hit will apply extra knockback, pushing most enemies away. Landing a melee strike while coming down from a jump or a fall will perform a critical hit, doing 50% bonus damage. And, fun fact, the mace is entirely built around this mechanic. In order to craft a mace, you'll need the ingredients you can only find in a trial chamber. Until I can prepare a specific trial chamber's guide, feel free to watch my own first time experience visiting one. I'll include a link to that video. But anyway, the mace uses an additional calculation of blocks fallen by the user to add damage to its attack. While it has the slowest recharge time of all weapons, its damage output potential is huge, prompting many Minecraft content creators to attempt defeating the game's strongest enemies with one well-timed blow. The trident is used as a melee weapon the same as any other, but shines more as a ranged weapon, so it's unlikely you'll be using one to poke things with. Tridents cannot be crafted, and can only be obtained as a rare drop from drowned mobs carrying them. For bedrock players, you're in luck here, as drowned are about two and a half times more likely to spawn with tridents than in Java, and almost three times more likely to drop it for you when they're killed. Ranged weapons each function a little differently from each other. To use a bow, hold the Use button until the bowstring is pulled back, then release the button to shoot. If you release the Use button early, you will still shoot an arrow, but it will follow a shorter arc and do less damage. Though most of the time you'll want fully charged shots, this mechanic can also come in handy when you just need to deal a few hit points of damage quickly, or to create some breathing room when a mob is bearing down on you. Crossbows, on the other hand, can only be shot when fully charged, but their advantage is that once a shot is charged, releasing the Use button will load a shot, which can be carried around until it's needed. When the time comes to shoot it, 
tap the Use button again to fire. Both weapons need ammunition, primarily in the form of arrows. Arrows do not need to be carried in any specific slot, and will be used from your inventory as long as they are available. If you do have multiple inventory slots with arrows, or different arrow types, your offhand slot takes precedence, followed by arrows in the hotbar from the left to the right, and then from the inventory, from top to bottom, left to right. As a side note, something that I've experienced but I can't find actual documentation for is that arrows shot in bedrock seem to follow a straighter path and be less affected by gravity than they are in Java. Throwing the trident is done the same way as using a bow. Hold use to charge and then release it to throw. But since there is no ammunition, the trident must be retrieved. That said, the trident also has some of the most unique and interesting enchantments available to it, one of which does return the trident to the user's hand after a throw. In Java Edition, combat was updated way back in version 1.9, adding in a recharge mechanic to melee weapons, removing the benefit of spam-clicking attacks. Attacking can still be done repeatedly, but at low strength, unless the weapon gauge has charged fully. Bedrock Edition maintains the old style of melee combat, so if you're playing this version, you can click away to your heart's content. But keep in mind, in either edition, all mobs have a half second of damage immunity after they're hit, so holding or spamming your attack still won't benefit you. Once you have iron, a shield is a must-have protective item. Shields can block melee attacks, projectiles, and even creeper explosions. Move your shield to the offhand slot next to your armor to equip it. Although it can be activated from your main hotbar, it's just a more awkward and risky way to do it. In both editions, blocking with a shield will slow your movement and you'll need to release the block to attack. In Bedrock Edition, blocking is automatic with crouching. Press and hold the sneak button to block with your shield. In Java, crouching and blocking are separate actions. Press and hold the Use button instead to activate your shield. One note of caution, enemies who carry axes will disable a shield for 5 seconds, meaning you'll likely get to block once and then you'll need to change strategies. When you are first starting out, the best advice I can give you is to routinely scan your surroundings whenever you are in dark areas. While many mobs make sounds that might alert you to one nearby, creepers don't make any noise until they're right next to you, and sometimes other mobs may even be able to sneak up on you. If you do get snuck up on by a creeper, and you already have a shield, turn and face the hissing fuse sound and hold up your shield. The shield will absorb the damage, although some of the blocks around you will be destroyed. If you don't have a shield, run away from the sound as quickly as possible. Creeper damage is based on how close or far away you are from the creeper when it explodes. Look out for openings above you in caves. While mobs will usually avoid pathfinding that causes them fall damage, once they notice a player, they may drop down from unlit areas and surprise you. Ranged mobs like skeletons and pillagers are dangerous before you have a shield, but if you can rush one and kill it, you may get yourself a bow or a crossbow without having to make one yourself. Generally, these will be fairly damaged, meaning that they have far fewer uses than a newly crafted one. Once you do have a shield, just pay attention to the timing of enemy fire and you should have no problem alternating between blocking shots and advancing or attacking. Also, on both versions, shots may be deflected back to the enemy using a shield. For melee mobs, one potential tactic is to place a few blocks under your feet, creating a small pillar to stand on. Most mobs can only jump one block high. Recently, in version 1.20.2, mob reach was changed, so I now recommend building up one block higher than the monster's height. That's three blocks for zombies and their variants, four blocks for endermen. This tactic does not work well if ranged mobs are in the area, as they can knock you off of your pillar, spiders can climb the sides, and creepers will still explode next to your pillar. So this tactic is very situational. In caves especially, but also next to cliff sides, you can dig or mine a few blocks into the side of a wall, as long as the drop next to it is two blocks deep. This will give you a hidey hole to attack from and retreat into while avoiding most attacks. 
Pay attention to mob sizes. For example, Endermen are three blocks tall, so they can't follow you under two block high ceilings. Spiders are wider than a block, so they can't fit into a one block wide gap. Having a ranged weapon will allow you to snipe enemies from afar. You can combine this tactic with having the high ground or an escape tunnel to clear out an area without too much danger. Water and lava can change mob pathfinding, push mobs away, and in the case of lava, quickly damage and destroy most enemies. In my water and lava video, I discuss in detail just how amazing carrying around a bucket of water can be, and how lava can also be used defensively and offensively. Speaking of water, with the exception of rivers, oceans, and drip zone caves where drowned can spawn, a body of water can be the perfect place to retreat to from many mobs. While your movement in water is not nearly as good as on land, it's even worse for most mobs. Water also damages endermen, forcing them to teleport away, and absorbs the block destruction from a creeper blast, though not the attack damage. Most mobs will enter a boat and get stuck if they pathfind across it. You can use this to your advantage to trap a mob that is following you and then attack it at arm's length. Keep in mind that in Bedrock Edition, this trick will not work for Endermen. Java's Endermen cannot teleport in a boat, but Bedrock Endermen will hop out and retaliate. Skeletons may accidentally shoot other mobs, and if they do, most of them will turn on their new attacker and save you the trouble. If you have multiple mobs after you and at least one is a skeleton, you can try to position yourself to force a hit and start a mob fight. Some enemies are afraid of certain animals and will avoid them. I'll talk about those details in their individual mob videos. Tamed wolves, also known as dogs, and iron golems will attack most enemies. Dogs will attack skeletons on sight, but for other mobs will wait until you attack them or take damage from them. Iron golems seek and destroy hostile mobs that they detect regardless of the player. Just be careful. While they typically ignore you, if you hit an iron golem, it will turn on you, and they hit like a truck. For home defense, fences and walls will keep out mobs other than endermen and spiders. Fences and walls appear visually to be one block tall, but actually have a collision hitbox of one and a half blocks. Mobs can only jump one block, but you, as the player, can jump a bit more than a block. Placing a carpet or a trap door on top of a fence or wall changes the collision to be a bit more than a block. This means that you can jump over this section, but mobs cannot. Always carry plenty of food and eat between fights if your hunger bar needs a boost. Remember that to regenerate health, your hunger bar must be at least 90% full. And if it gets down to 30%, you will no longer be able to sprint to avoid mobs. Lastly, the biggest difference I tend to see between new players and highly skilled players is the tactical use of blocks. In tighter areas like caves, if you need a quick escape, you can cut off tunnels by placing blocks behind you. If your tools are good enough, you may even be able to destroy the blocks that allow mobs to follow you. This is survival, but it's still a sandbox game. Mold your world to your own needs. Phew, uh, that was a lot, and I don't blame you if you didn't get all that. But as long as you took something away from it, then I've done my job. As always, there's still so much more to talk about. Soon we'll dive into the details of individual mob types with some shorter videos that showcase specific mobs. I hope you enjoyed today's Caves Notes, and I hope to see you around for the next one. Please show your support with a like and subscribe if you found this content useful. I'm looking forward to making much, much more. As always, thank you for watching.